I want to talk about some interesting things related to an Alzheimer's brain. What is the essence of Alzheimer's? Well, the brain is composed of neurons, okay? And you have these little synapses or gap between these neurons, which the communication travels through here. You have certain electrical impulses that occur. Now, the interesting thing about the brain is it only represents 2% of all the tissues, but it takes up 20% of all the fuel. So it's a fuel hog. Yet it's not like pumping like your heart is or your muscles. It can't, it's not contracting. It's just sitting there. Uh, it's not like the kidney where it's filtering blood or the liver that's doing all these metabolic things. So really what it's doing, it's taking chemistry and converting it into electrical energy to send signals and information throughout different parts of the brain to create different effects throughout the entire body. So it's an electrical organ. So the essence of Alzheimer's is basically atrophy, shrinkage of the neuron. And you're losing the synapses. So if we look a little bit further, we find out the reason why is because they're starving to death. Okay, they're starving of low glucose, which is their fuel. So basically that's what Alzheimer's is. And we also have other things going on. We have uh, some plaquing going on. That's a protein plaque. We have glycation, which is uh, another type of sticky protein that's plugging things up. And we also have a loss of oxygen. Now the oxygen in your brain is mostly used for the oxidation of glucose. And this is mainly why you need a lot of oxygen. There are certain tests that can be done to measure the brain's consumption of oxygen and the consumption of glucose. Now, if you wanted to check the metabolism of glucose, you would want to just check the cerebral metabolic rate. Um, and there's a test that you can do. You can check with your doctor. Maybe they can do that because here's the thing. Alzheimer's starts like in your 20s or 30s. And it starts out completely asymptomatic. There are no symptoms at all. Uh, yet, you're having a problem with your metabolic rate of glucose okay, and oxygen. And there's certain parts of the brain that are affected more than others. The most common area of the brain that's affected is the hippocampus. This is part of the brain that controls, the, like, it's like the relay switch into your database. So if you have damage in the hippocampus, you're going to have a problem with memory and learning and spatial memory, uh, trying to find out where you parked in the parking lot or where did you put your keys. So many people develop memory problems early on and they don't realize that it could be the start of this condition. Now, another interesting thing about the brain of Alzheimer's is that in the brain you have low insulin. But outside the brain, in the periphery, you have high insulin. So obviously, you also have high blood glucose um, that's outside the brain. But inside the brain, specifically in the neurons, it's gonna be low. So everything is opposite. And I think you already know this, but um, they always talk about diabetes being associated with Alzheimer's, like their cousin diseases. And they both seem to share uh, things in common, like insulin resistance. Now, that's all very interesting, but now what can we do with that information? Okay, let's say, for example, you have Alzheimer's or you have a loved one that has Alzheimer's or you want to prevent it. Well, there's a couple of very important things you need to know, and that is this. If your insulin is high outside your body, which most of the time it's going to be if you're consuming the regular diet that most people consume, you're not going to be able to run the brain on the alternative fuel that your brain loves that actually will increase the oxygen, that will improve the neurogenesis or the generation of neurons, that will improve the antioxidants, which will also lessen the inflammation and improve the cognition. But you can't run on ketones as an alternative fuel if the insulin is too high and if the glucose is too high. So this is the problem. You're stuck with glucose. But the problem is you can't absorb it because the whole mechanism is broken, okay? So this is what you need to do to prevent it and also to lessen the symptoms if you have it. Ketones. You wanna start running the brain on ketones. Ketones have the ability to bypass this damage absorptive mechanism 
and feed the neurons directly and start to improve this area right here. The other thing that's pretty dramatic, if you're starting to get dementia or you have Alzheimer's, is to actually start taking ketones directly. Okay, and you can take them as exogenous ketones or MCT oil, in addition to doing intermittent fasting. If you're new to my channel, click the link down below and you can learn more about it. But those are the things that you need to really focus on um, to really start to undo some of this damage. Now, there is a point of no return. And if you do research on the associations for Alzheimer's, <laughs> there's no known cause, there's no known cure, you can't do anything, we're still doing research. Well, I just wanna let you know, there is some good research out there that you can improve this. I put some links down below. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.